Okay, I'm going to start. So um, I would like to show you today uh, some part of the work that I have been doing during the last four or five years, which is the use of data science tools in a specific problem, which is crime analysis, right? Uh, as was mentioned before, uh, I'm working in Brazil, in the Rio de Janeiro specifically, and the institution is the Fundação Getulio Vargas. And there I have my lab, which is the Visual Data Science Lab. Uh, here is the link if you are interested in knowing, uh, having more information about the, the work that I'm going to present now. So you can go to this link here, or you can send me an email, okay? Uh, just before starting the topic, I would like to show you some pictures right, of the institution. This is the institution there in Brazil. This is it's kind of similar to NYU uh, and New York City because we don't have a campus. Uh, we have some main buildings in the, in, in the city, as you can see there, which is basically the, the most bigger uh, institution or, or, or building for the institution. But we have different places around the city where some schools or some specific departments are working on. So kind of similar to New York because I, I, was, I did my PhD then at NYU and it was a different kind of university, right? Because not having the campus. And also we have some wonderful views from our building you can see here. This is the, the, a photo from my picture, from my window. You can see that we have we are in front of the of the sea. You we can see all the boats there, and this is a wonderful view. And also you have recognized right uh, for the carnival in Brazil. It's very hot, but it's a very wonderful city. If you are interested in visit the institution, we are very happy to host visitors to help us in, uh, improve our research there. So I want to talk about crimes, right? I, I don't think I need to motivate people why we should study crime, because this is a, a, a problem that is very common in uh, most of the countries in South America. So I'm from Peru, also in Peru, it's a, a, very, a very important problem. And right now that I'm working in Brazil, this is also a, even more important problem there. And especially in some specific city, right? For example, Rio, Rio Janeiro is kind of dangerous place uh, in some location, right? You need to know where to stay. I've been there for more than four years and nothing happened to me, but you need to be careful, right? And this is a, a similar problem in all the countries in South America. For example, Colombia is also very uh, known about this issue. I'm pretty sure that some cities in the US also have this kind of issue, right? This is a common problem that we need to use our tools, all the techniques that we have been using before, uh, we've learned before to see if we can help on this problem. So here I'm showing a picture, which it was a bus kidnapping in Rio de Janeiro, which happened in 2019. So yeah, I put this picture because I did the presentation before and just the day that I was going to do the presentation, this event happens, right? So I think it was a, a very good picture to show, right? That we, we are dealing with an important uh, problem. So, but if we, are, if we talk about crimes, there are different kinds of crimes, right? We have the street crime, we have corporate crime, organized crime, white collar crime, political crime, cyber crime. So there are different kind of things crime that we can find nowadays. So what we are going to focus now is the street crime, okay? The, the, the type of crime that happened to people, to cars, to uh, mobility units over the street, okay? Also commercial establishments also uh, belong to this kind of category, okay? This is the kind that we are going to use here. And one characteristic that we can find in this kind of crime is that uh, this is an event that happened. Uh, for example, here we have uh, this point in the middle, which is the event, the crime happened in that specific location. So, and associated with that event, we have the location, basically the latitude and longitude uh, coordinates. We have the, the time, uh, because it's an special temporal event. Uh, it, it also, uh, this also have a type, right? Because it can be, I don't know, a robbery, uh, different kind of crimes that can, can happen. And there is a victim, right? 
but we are not going to work with the victim in this case. We are only going to use these three elements from the crime, the type, the time, and the spatial location, right? Which is the configuration of the events that happen for this category of crime, the street crime. So what do we do in my lab or what we are doing in, in my lab regarding this issue, right? Uh, there are different kind of uh, approach that we can take for uh, to to work on this on this issue. But uh, what we are interested in is first doing an uh, identify spatial and temporal crime patterns, right? We need, we want to do an exploration of this kind of data to identify those crime patterns, which is something important. And also, we want to visualize those crimes over the time, right? As you know, my, the name of my lab is the Visual Data Science Lab. And my background is in visualization, and I use a, I do a lot of work in the intersection, right, between visualization and machine learning. Uh, we are pretty sure that techniques, systems, visual analytics systems, uh, using those two components can be a very powerful tool. Involving the human in the loop of the exploration is a, a powerful tool that we should use a lot. So that's why. Uh, we want to do some techniques, automatic techniques for the identification of those crime patterns, which is the first step that I'm talking here. But we also want to use the visualization techniques to, to put the human in the loop or, and also to show the result that the techniques from the machine learning can do. So, and, and specifically for this problem, we want to do, uh, we, we want to not only uh, try to uh, give some numbers about the data, apply some techniques for the machine learning. We want to try to give uh, a first step, giving some explanation of what some event can happen, why some patterns can happen. And for doing that explanation of the causes of uh, some patterns, so we need to obviously relate or uh, find the, the, the relation of this kind of data set with other factors, right? With other variables. For example, the infrastructure can give us an, an intuition why these events are uh, why these uh, events are happening in a specific location, right? So this is what I'm going to show now. Different works that they try to do this these three points that I mentioned here. So. Uh, in my lab, we have been working again in uh, using different approaches. Uh, here, uh, doing some um, visual analytic system, which is in the top, uh, creating another version of the systems, uh, more simple, trying to change what is the sub the, the user that is going to use this system, uh, because we want to create system also for the crowd, not only for the specialists on that specific topic. Also, we are working in kind of area related to perception security. So trying to analyze image and see how people feel about, uh, if people feel about that it is a secure or unsecure place. Uh, and also some kind of forecasting, which is on the top. But uh, for now, for in this presentation, I will focus, oh, it's not this one, in only these three works that are highlighted here. And I'm going to start with the first one, okay? This is going to be... Uh, so the first system that I'm going to show is named Crime Analyzer. You can see there, uh, it can look at, at the beginning like a complex system, but it's not a complex system, but it was done also for the specialists, okay? So if we put this system uh, on the internet, online, people, a common people, a regular people are not going to use this one because uh, uh, maybe there are too much information, too much details that uh, are, are common people would need, a uh, common citizen. So this is a system done more specifically for analysts, right? People who work in the, in the security, uh, in security agencies in a city, so they, they can use this kind of, or, or for maybe people from the police who is trying to understand how the, the different crime pattern happens in a, in a city. Let me give you some details. So the, the goal of this system is this three point here. So uh, just to, to mention and uh, give an overview. So we started this project like four years ago. So it was our first step in this, in this area. Our first collaboration with domain experts in the security agencies in, in Sao Paulo. 
So the first step in all data science projects should be trying to understand the fears, right? In, instead of just starting applying different machine learning techniques and get some numbers and see if the numbers are good or not. So we, we really want to understand the data first. So that's why we did this system initially. And we also apply some machine learning techniques as, as I was going to explain before, uh, uh, later. But the, the initial idea was let's understand how the crimes behave in Brazil. Uh, so the idea was to analyze and characterize the dynamic of crimes, right? How, because we know that this crime doesn't happen in a specific place. They move. There is a movement, especially movement of the crime. And there is also a temporal behavior, right? So we want to understand that, how, how that happens. And, and for that, and something, a, a term very common for analysts in crime analysis is identify the crime hotspots. But what is a crime hotspot? That's a kind of hard question to, to understand, to, to define. So what we are going to show here is give some definition of hotspot, and I'm going to show you how, why we are interested in this def definition and how we can apply techniques from machine learning to identify those kind of hotspots, okay? And we also don't want to do a, a global analysis because there are many studies that show that the, the dynamic of crime changes around the city, right? Especially if we are talking about a big city like, like Sao Paulo in Brazil, uh, with the more than, I, I don't know, it, it should be more than 20 million people there. So the, the kind of crime, the dynamic of the crime in, this, in the downtown is very different to the dynamic of the crime in the suburb, right? In residential areas. So that's why uh, applying uh, the same analysis for the whole city is not a, a, a good strategy. And it's also was co uh, corroborated or, uh, by our collaborators, which are domain experts in, in this topic in Brazil. Uh, that's why we decide to do a, an analysis of these hotspots in for a specific location, right? That they want to really understand how, how is the dynamic of crime on those regions. And also we want to understand and compare, right? We, we want to do this comparison of the different kind of patterns that we can find in the city. So our methodology was basically uh, two steps. Uh, we want to do the identification of hotspots, right? And once we have the hotspots, we want to explore the dynamic of crimes, okay? So as I mentioned before, uh, this is going to be a system, a visual analytic system as you, uh, as you saw in the, in the beginning of this part of the presentation. But this is not a dashboard. It's not just a dashboard that you can put the data and do some visual queries, no. This, this, this system has a backend which use a lot of the different techniques for machine learning for doing a specific task. So basically, if there is a task that we can automatize, we do the automation of that task. But uh, we also give some visual metaphors to the users so he can understand and be part of this exploration. So this is the second part. The second part is going to be creating, right? Deciding how this design this visual analytics tool for doing the exploration of the, of the result that the techniques before was, uh, was able to identify. So for the hotspot identification, okay, before that, uh, this is basically a pipeline of the system. So you can see here we have obviously a, a data set. Again, the data set is the, is the straight crime, right? That you have a temporal, a spatial, a type of crime. So this is our data. We have that kind of data from the, the Sao Paulo city and, and for many years, more than 10 years, okay? This is a historical data. The second step is the hotspot identification that I mentioned before. This is something that we are going to automatize. And when we have those hotspots, we are going to use a set of visual and visualization, visual metaphors to uh, allow the user to be part of this exploration. Okay, let's go to the first step. For the hotspot identification, we are going to use uh, a mathematical technique, which is named the non negative, uh, no, uh, the non negative matrix factorization. Okay. Basically, we have a matrix, which is here the shift, uh, X, 
and we are going to decompose that matrix in two, in two other metrics, W and H, okay? Uh, we are going to give what, what is the benefit of doing this decomposition, but the idea is that these two other uh, metrics are going to be non-negative, okay? So how we are going to uh, put our data in this matrix, how we are going to model that? Here is an example. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Before, before that, I, I should mention that in, in this point of the project, uh, it was our initial project. So the, the specialists that they have the data, the, the kind of data that they provide us that data, they didn't want to, uh, at this point, they didn't give us the, the coordinates, the latitude and the longitude of the crime. So uh, I, I think uh, at that point, they have those constraints on sharing that kind of data because of some uh, sensitive information and, and some other details about uh, in, the secret in, in the security agency in Sao Paulo. What they provide is basically an index. So basically they divide the city in census units, which is about a census unit is about a uh, contains of around uh, 200 to 300 residentials. So in some cases, for example, a census unit can be just a building. In other cases, it can be a block, okay? But those are uh, the, the regions, okay? And each of the crimes belong to one of those uh, regions. In this case, we are going to call each of these uh, small region sites as is here. In this, in this uh, example on the bottom, we have 25 sites, right? Uh, we can count to the polygon is 25. And just to show how the technique works, this is a toy example. We are going to simulate the data from, uh, from five years by month. So in total, we are going to have 60 time slices. Okay, so basically this is the, the, the kind of data that we are going to use. And we are going to create this matrix here, which is the matrix X that I'm going to decompose later. So this matrix X is going to have in the, for the columns are going to be the time slices. So it's going to be in this case 60. And the, and the rows are going to be the sites. In this case, for this toy example, we have 25 sites, right? So this, this is going to be the, the size of our matrix. And I, we are going to create our toy example. Uh, basically, all the all the 20, um, 21 uh, sites from this toy example is going to be a safe place. So basically the crime is going to be almost zero, okay? And we are going to create four uh, sites that, that they have some, uh, uh, some criminality on there, right? So for example, the site A, this is a toy example again, so uh, we are going to simulate some data with a high crime rate with a mean of eight crimes per month. And the B is going to be because it's the neighbor. So it's going to be a, a, a site which is very correlated with A. So the, the number of crimes is also going to be high and most of the time, right? Most of the 60 time steps. Uh, the number, the, the site C is going to be a, a region where the number of crimes is very low, but they, they have crime along the time, right? In this case, the mean is one. It's, it is no large in number, but it's very frequent, okay? And the C is going to be another kind of event. So th this is going to be an event where uh, most of the time there is no crime, but in some specific time steps, something happened and the number of crimes uh, rise a lot. For example, in the in the uh, in the time steps 35 and 47, the number of crime was 15 and 10, okay? And the other side is almost zero, okay? So basically using this data here, this toy example here, we are going to create this matrix here, is the matrix X. And you can see here, right? The, uh, uh, the site A and B, which is the rows, they have a, a, a brighter color which mean that there is a, a high crime and in almost all the time steps, right? In almost all the time steps uh, in B and in A and B. And in C, you, we can see that we also have some crime, but the, the intensity of that color is very low, right? Because we said that this is a, it's very frequent, but the intensity is very low. And in the case of D, uh, it's almost zero on all the time steps, except for these two points here. 
except for those for the, the 35 and the 47, if I'm correct. Okay, so given that matrix, uh, we are going to do the, the composition, right? The decomposition here uh, in W and H is going to be these two matrix. Uh, for this non-negative matrix factorization, we need to define a parameter, which is the K. In this case, because we know the, the kind of event, we are going to put the K equal to three, but we are going to talk about different other parameters later, okay? If we do this K equal to three, what we are going to find these two, uh, we are going to get these two matrix, right? The W and the H. But the, the, the good thing about this decomposition, if you can see in the matrix X, most of the terms are zero, right? So basically uh, this is an sparse matrix and, and what this decomposition is going to do is going to get a, a, two, a two different matrix, but with a low rank. And this low rank matrix is going to keep as much of the information from the original matrix. So basically this matrix W is going to be the basis and the, uh, for, uh, the, the basis of this, uh, of this the composition and the H is going to be the coefficients. And the coefficient, uh, so basically each of the columns is going to be a hotspot for us, okay? It's going to be a hotspot. What it means that it's going to give us a configuration of these regions where the crime happens. And the coefficients in the matrix H is going to be how that configuration of the hotspots happens or the intensity of that configuration of the hotspot ha uh, happens along the time, okay? So if we can see the first column here in the matrix W, so the, the, the two important points is A and B, right? Because this is the, it's telling us that in this configuration of the hotspot, the two regions has a lot of intensity and the component here on the, on the edge is, is going to tell us the, the intensity of that configuration along the time. In the second hotspot is a configuration of the region where only the, only the, the site D has some important value, right? But this, this configuration only going to happen in these two time steps because the, the matrix H is going to give us the intensity along the time. So we can see here that the intensity along the time is going to happen only in these two points uh, or time steps. And the third configuration is going to be the third column here, the third hotspots, which is going to highlight the site C. Um, we can see that this is also going to give uh, the the row the low column low row of the matrix H is going to give us intensity, which is a low intensity, right? So basically, this matrix is going to find for us what are the different uh, hotspots that we can find in that specific regions, what are the important sites for that specific uh, hotspot, and how that hotspot will uh, uh, behave along the time which is very nice, which is something that we, we were looking for, right? But this technique depends on this parameter K, right? So what happened if we change, it? this is the result here on the bottom, this is the result when we change the, the K to five. So the K to, uh, if we change that, we're gonna see that basically the, the first hotspot that was identified before was decomposing two, right? Was decomposing two. The third, it, it created here, uh, um, a third hotspot here, which basically was similar to the to the first hotspot from the previous analysis, and then there is the other hotspot here, which was similar to the previous analysis, and there is a column there that is basically some um, noise, right? From noise from the from from the data that we have there. So basically, th this this parameter is important. We need to do some kind of a uh, uh, parameters um, uh, setting, right? Using different try, uh, different kind of uh, values and then trying to find what is the best value that we should analyze. But it also depends, and this is a parameter that basically the, the user have some control on, on there, right? Uh, when when we have the system, which is, is going to process all this data on uh, uh, real time, so he can change that value as well. So we do some analysis, trying to see what would be the best parameter, but the user also have the, the power to, to set that parameter according to his knowledge. So basically identifying those hotspots, as I mentioned before. So just 
to, to give the takeaway here. So our idea of hotspotting here or our definition is not only those places where the number of crime is high, okay? Uh, we also consider uh, a hotspot places where the number of crime is not high, it's not very intense, but it's very often along the time, it's very frequent along the time, right? Like the case of C. And also uh, the case of D, where there is no, no crime along the time, but it, the crime happened in two specific periods. So this is also something important that we should take a look. If we apply the normal techniques that they just count the number of crime in different sites, we will, we will not be able to identify those two other options, right? The, the case of C or the case of D, right? Those basically we will miss those kind of uh, uh, events or patterns that happen on the data. That's why we, we are trying, using a, a different techniques to, to allow us to identify those cases or uh, hotspot that are very important for us and for our collaborator, which were the domain experts. So based with all these uh, uh, techniques for identifying a hotspot, we create this visual analytics system. Just to give a brief overview, basically here, uh, the analysis starts here on the top. We have the map. Uh, we can select what is the region that we want to analyze, which are the polygons here. Uh, after that, uh, we apply the, 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 the hotspot ident identification and this, view here, the hotspot view, is going to show us the different hotspots or the most important hotspot that uh, we were able to identify. You can see here that we can define what is the number of hotspot that we want to select. And uh, based on that, we have other views that is going to show us some additional information, right? This global temporal view basically is going to give us the, the number of crimes along the time. And also when we select one of the hotspots, this view is also going to filter the data, is going to give us some uh, additional steps, right? Additional, because we have the global information and then once we select specific things, we show also those specific things. And here we have some other view uh, of the data, right? By month, by day of the week, by uh, period of the date. And here, this is important because we are going to show that later. This is the ranking type view. Basically here is telling us, uh, again, as I mentioned before, there are different kinds of crimes, right? For example, a, a, puzzle, a puzzle by a robbery is one, a, a commercial robbery is another one, a residential robbery is another one. So for each of the crimes, we are going to see along the time if this was uh, the most important or not, or what is the position, the ranking of that crime type along the time. For example, here we can see that this crime here, in most of the uh, uh, time slices, it was the most important crime, right? So the second one, for example, this one here, uh, in some cases it was the second, in other cases it was third, and in more, but in most of the cases it was the, the second most important crime for the global view, right? Once we select a specific hotspot, or we, this ranking is also going to change because that, that view of the what is the most important crime uh, in the in, along the time is going to give us some characterization of the hotspots. Okay, it's going to give us the characterization of the hotspots. So let me show you an example how we use this 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 tool. Okay, so this is an analysis that we did in in, in Sao Paulo. So, and the domain, with the domain expert, and the domain expert were interested in analyzing the, the, this kind of um, crime, the card theft, right? Uh, so they, they knew that this kind of crime happens on, outside the, the, the city, when they, in, the, in the highways that leave the city, right? And here we have two, highways uh, live in the city. This is the first one, which is going to Rio de Janeiro, if I'm correct. Uh, so basically the red line is showing the, the, the highway living in the city. And this is also here, we have another red line for another place, but uh, living to the south of Sao Paulo, okay? Two different exits of the city where the people, uh, where the people transport, right? The, the commodities to different other places of Brazil. 
So, and the blue lines basically are uh, important avenues that do the connection with the highways. Right, this is the blue line that connects to these highways. This is also a, another important avenue connected to the highway. And here, the same, right? This is the red line, the highway leaving the city, but this is an important avenue. The blue line is an important avenue that's basically connects to that highway. So, and, and especially know that <coughs> they, they have the feeling or the hypothesis that this kind of uh, crime happens should happen in the red, the, close to the red line. So basically they, they want to analyze <coughs> what are the hotspots in those cases. And here they were able to see that. <coughs> so basically looking at this plot here, these are three different hotspots. And this is the ranking view for each of the hotspots. <coughs> and the green line, <coughs> and the green line is the, is the current time that they are <coughs> <what's> the <computer? coughs> is that the current time that they are <coughs> one second take your time okay and the green line is the crime type that they are interesting. And we can see that for the case of this highway that goes to Rio de Janeiro, yeah, the green line is basically on the top five crimes along the time, right? It's for the hotspot A, B, and C. But that doesn't happen for the for this other highway, which is also is a highway leaving the city, but to, uh, to another uh, to other places, right? To other cities in, in the south of Brazil. So this is something that <clears throat> they were expecting. So basically they confirm, <clears throat> they confirm the hypothesis, but here was something unexpected for them. So they want to know what happened there. Why is this is not, a, the hypothesis doesn't apply here. So what they did is basically feel that they, they, they did the same process as before, but not for the for all the kind apps, only for the for for this kind uh, for for the cargo there yeah, for this kind type, and they did uh, they they did the same analysis for these two highways. So basically, on the top, this is something that they just confirmed something as before. But on the bottom, they could uh, they were able to see that basically uh, they. So these are, these are the hotspots for this kind of type. There are some places that they should concentrate the, the, the analysis, but this also, this plot here basically show us the, the number of crimes along the time. So this is for five years, 2000, 2001, 2002, three and four. So we can see that the, basically the number of crime of this kind of type greater reduce in this, in this place here, right? Along the time, so in 2000 was a little uh, there was some number of crime, but in 2004 it was almost nul, almost zero. So, but it, it, anyway, so it, it was a very low because the the the, the transportation, the the number of of, of uh, the quantity of of the of this transportation, it was also a low number. But they were able to just do the analysis for this specific crime type. They were able to identify where are those places that they should put the attention, right? This is something important that they, they didn't know about the data set. So this tool basically allowed them to, to know this kind of event that happened in the city. Okay, the, the second tool is about, uh, is something that we did, but not for the specialists. It was a tool done for, for, the, for the crowd, okay? For, for that regular citizen, because we, we think that people should have access to this kind of data. So that's why we create this tool, which is named Mirante. I want to give us some details here, but I, I want to first motivate why we, we are interested in that, right? Because uh, again, so the population has to write it to know the, what is the criminality around the neighborhoods for different regions, for different uh, reasons. Uh, if we were able to do that, we should be able to do different kind of application, right? Imagine uh, to create a waste application where instead of getting the shortest path, you get the safest path. So people can go to a new city and, and, and visit different places and just taking the, 
the directions with are the most safe safest place, right? Maybe it's a little longer, but it's, it's safer to, to go from one place to another, right? And, but this kind of a, a application can also have some impact, right? Socioeconomic impact, right? For example, the property price here, we can see a plot where we can see when the number of crimes or the crime rates is high, basically the, the price of the houses get reduced, right? So we need to be careful. We, we should be able to share the data to the, to the citizens, but we need to be careful about what are the effects of that. So basically we create a system here. At this point of, the, of the, our collaboration with the specialists, they provide us the, not, not only the site coordinates, no, they provide us the, the coordinate, the exact location <coughs> of the crime. So we have the latitude and longitude. So, so with that, we should be able to do some more high resolution analysis on the data, right? <laughs> Okay, and with that, we did an analysis based on the street level. So basically, we are using the roadmap of the city and trying to show there the data. And uh, what, what I mean with that, imagine that this is a city, this is the roadmap of the city. And here we have the, basically we can get the roadmap, which is a graph <coughs> using, for example, Open Street Map or Google Maps. We have the crimes. So all the points here are the crime, which basically, you know, the GPS always has some error. That's why they are not exactly in the, in the streets. They can be on different locations. So our first step was trying to do an aggregation of those crimes in the intersection of the crimes, in, in the intersection of the graph, in the corners of the city. So once we have in this, in this format, we can apply different kind of techniques that uh, are very common for graph, for example, graph signal processing, a complex network, we can do different kinds of analysis, right? So, but basically in this initial project, uh, what we want to do is just try to explore the data, right? We, we do the, the aggregation there, but uh, before going to the results, so it's important to, to, to mention why we are using the street networks and we are not, and we don't use just a regular grid as it's very common uh, in most of the analysis for this kind of data. So if we change the resolution here, we have three, uh, three different uh, aggregation of the data with different regular grids, different resolution of the grid. We can see, for example, for the uh, look at this uh, region A, Right here in this resolution is aggregating all the crimes in this location. If we increase the resolution, we can see that the 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 crimes basically happen in these two uh, regions here, in these two stairs. And if we increase the resolution, we can see that the crime basically happen in these two regions here. And this dotted line here is basically a river. Okay. And we are pretty sure, and that's something that also our collaborators uh, said that the crime that happened in this place here, which is in one side of the river, doesn't have to be with the crimes on the other side of the river, right? So basically uh, using this approach from the regular grid, so we are going to have some limitation, right? Because we are considering all of them in the same in the same cell, but it, that really doesn't happen, right? Because there are some, urban infrastructure on the city that can make that uh, that hypothesis uh, not to be able, right? So that's why we decide to use the roadmap. And I think because we have the specific geolocation of, uh, of the crime and we have the roadmap, I think the, the best granularity to do the, this kind of analysis would be that. We do some analysis also to, to try to validate and we find different examples similar to this one, right? And this is one example. For example, uh, the, the specialist did the analysis here. So they, they focus on this one. Here, the column means the number of crimes in the intersection on the streets. Uh, here is one specific hotspot, right? Because they're very red, so the, the crime is very high. And here we can see the number of crimes along the time. And basically, we can try to uh, select different time periods. Here at the beginning, here at the middle, and here at the end. So, and this map here, this heat map on the top is going to show the number of crimes in these two, uh, three periods, right? And we can see that here, there was some crime. Here, the, the crime on this location increased, but 
but here basically it was very low. And the, the just remi uh, reminding the my the initial goals of this project was to try to find a correlation, a relation of all the different uh, hotspots information that we identify here with some other variables on the city, right? Infrastructure for the city. So in this in this project, for example, in this system, Miranche, we wanted to do that using image from open uh, from Google Street View. So basically, this was done manually in this step. So Google Street View were able to give us some uh, photos of the places in different time periods. So we we identify one image of this place in this period. This is another image of the same place in this one and this uh, the same place in another time period, right? And we can see that there is basically a, a, a change in the infrastructure. It was an improvement, right, of the infrastructure in this point. And that might be the reason why the, the crime here get reduced, right? And basically our specialists were interested in that because they, they really want to know if the improvement in the infrastructure of the city really has an effect, right, in the, in the, in, in the, uh, in the intensity of crime that happen around the city. So they, they want to see if, if improving some places can make an, a change uh, on the security of those places. And this is an example showing that, yeah, it, it's happening. Maybe it's not a reason, it should be another factor that can explain that if, if that uh, that effect, but this, this is possible, one possible answer to that question, right? So based on, on, on that idea, we did another, uh, a, a, a more deep analysis on that. And we create this system, which is the crime path, the crime pattern analysis and visualization, which is a continuation of the previous project. So they did the Paco, following, right? We have yeah. another five minutes. Okay, yeah, okay. So the, the, the idea is the following. We have here the, the city, and we have, for example, three different intersections. Um, basically, we are aggregating the data, right? As I mentioned before. And basically for each corner, we have a time series, right? And what we want to do is find the similarity between those time series, which is a very hard problem. So basically this is a, our pipeline, how we are doing that. So here we have the, the, the street networks, and then we, do a, we are doing a hotspot detection, which is going to find the intersection, which are the most important places to, to analyze. And for here, we are using a, a probabilistic model for doing this, this, uh, this identification. And based on this uh, hotspot, we start time series. So basically we apply a deep learning techniques to go to the high dimensional space where the, the points in the high dimensional space, there is a similarity between the time series. And then we apply some clustering on that space. And then we automatically show the image from Google Street View to try to explain why those effects, uh, why those, patterns are happening. Okay, just very fast. So here basically we are aggregating all the data, all the crime in the in the in, in this region of Sao Paulo is about 130,000 crimes. Uh, if we do the hotspot identification, we are going to reduce uh, so this is the basically the, the, the total intersection where there is crime. And if we do the hot body identification, we have only 7.6% of the corners from before. But in those 6.6% of the corner, we have almost 50% of the crime. So those are the places where the police should focus, right? Because if it get if they solve the issue in this in this 7.6%, they are going to reduce basically 50% of the problem in Sao Paulo. So how do we do that? Hot body identification. Basically, each of the corners of the time series, we use a probabilistic model, and we are going to assign two different uh, scores for each of the corners: a probability and intensity. Uh, each of these points correspond to one corner here, and we find the places where there is a high probability and a high intensity, right? Which are this point, and this is what we get here, right? This is our our, our method to identify the hot spots. When we have the hot the hot spot, again, remember that each point is a time series, right? So we apply our, our technique, which is the hot pot to BECT. It's an autoencoder. 
to go to a, a to another space, right? And here, each point basically the 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 the, uh, the distance between two points is if they are similar or not. So this is the same view of that space. So basically, if we select one group, for example, this group here, we can see that this is the time series that belong to that group. We can see that all of them basically are almost similar. This other group is also almost similar. There are two, uh, two time steps where they have crime. And this group here, this is no crime, and then start the crime, okay? So basically using all the, those tools, we were able to do some, uh, some examples and some cases that I'm going to show. So th this is the, the visual analytics tool, but let me go directly to the, to the results. So everything is start here. So each of these points are the hotspots in the high dimensional space. The distance between them is the similarity. So basically we can apply a clustering and the clustering is shown here. So each of these time series is basically one group for the clustering that they have the same behavior, right? And we can be interested in one of them, for example, uh, we have this behavior here. No, uh, and we are going to pick three points in the city, okay? This P1 and P2 have the same behavior. So basically they, there was a lot of crime, there was no crime. And this P3, it was the opposite. There was no crime and then it started crying, okay? So um, using automatically the Google Street View, we can see in the, uh, look at the orange timeline, okay? There was crime and then the crime rate get reduced. And here are some examples, right? We can see that this was a place in 2010, in 2011, there was still in bad condition, right? But after that in 2015 and 2017, there was a bank. Maybe that could be the reason why the crime get, got reduced there, right? The same happened in this example here. And on the bottom, is the opposite. Basically, this is the place in 2010, there was no crime, 2011, there was no crime, but here they, uh, they, uh, there was a construction of a bus station. And the bus station, there is a lot of movement people. So that could be the reason why also the, the, the number of crime increased, okay? Here is also another example using the, the social factors. So basically we want to, we do some kind of analysis and try to see how the events on the later years. So this, these are two groups. Uh, for, look at this example here, the two groups. Uh, one group that the number of crime got increasing in the later years, right? So we can see these are two social economics of uh, regions in the cities. Social economic A, which is rich people and B, middle class, right? And we can see how the crimes in the, the, when, the, the, when this event happened, changes the number of crime. Basically the, the crime from the region A move to region B for this kind of type, uh, for this, for these patterns on the city, okay? So more details you can find on the paper, but because of the time I'm going to stop here just to give the, the, the conclusions that uh, basically it's very important to apply data science techniques to, to improve them, right? How the, the uh, government agency make public policies the mathematical tools are very important. I know uh, I didn't give too much details on that, but there, there are some very uh, interesting much, uh, mathematical machine learning tools on the back end of all these systems. Also, all these visual analytics systems, I'm, going, I'm not going to answer the question, but I'm going to help you to confirm in some cases or raise new hypotheses, right? And also the, 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 this trade-off between uh, people and automation is very important. I I I I, I like technique for machine learning, which is, can give us many things. Uh, can have good performance in many different tasks, but the the the, the power that a human have and the the different abilities that they have to uh, can help a lot in improving even the accuracy of those machine learning techniques. Okay, those are my collaborators and that's all that I have to present today. So thank you for listening to me and I open to questions. Thank you, Dr. Poco. Uh, I see we have seven minutes, so enough time mm -hmm. for two to three questions. If people want to, oh, I see there's already a question in the chat by Frank mm -hmm. Valles. Um, uh, feel free to unmute yourself or I can I can read it myself up to you. Okay, can you read? Yes. So 
when when you identify hotspots and you attribute features that may be crime factors which are the characteristics that were significant and uh, for example, traffic level, types of vehicles, number of trucks, buses, cars, bicycles, speed limits, surrounding region, economic levels. Also, can you make recommendations to the cities for changes to reduce crime? Okay, uh, thank you for the for the question. So, in this case, in in the three different tours that I mentioned, uh, I show today. So the. The other variable that we are using was the social economic, which is one of the last example. Uh, and the other one was the infrastructure, right? Based on the Google Street Map view. So in these two, the three cases, we are not doing that, but there is another project that I was working on, which is basically trying to create contrafactors, which is something that uh, you are talking there. Basically what we, we have a, a machine learning model that can do the prediction of crime, we have that model uh, based uh, where that model was created based using different variables, like the variable that you mentioned there, for example, the type of vehicle, traffic levels, buses, cars. So we have different variables that we can uh, use to train a model to do the prediction of crime. And based on that, based on that model, we can also use other techniques that are basically uh, going to create contrafactors. So basically a contrafactor is going to create a, is going to create a scenarios where you can change, you can do some changes on some of the variables that are going to make the model change the decision. For example, if there is a region and the model said that it is an unsafe place, this contrafactor techniques is going to give you some modification of that region that is going to make the model to predict that this is a safe place. Yeah, that is possible. And there are many different works, not only for crime types, that this is very common for different kind of uh, different machine learning techniques. We are doing that, but there are some problems, right? Because we are assuming that the model is, uh, the, the machine learning model is modeling the world perfectly, but that doesn't happen. In some cases, the, the, those contrafactor techniques can, suggest something that is impossible to do. So we are trying to do some a modification of the techniques that we can fix some of the changes so we can see, though so you, you cannot change this one, you can only increase this variable, you can only decrease that variable. So in order to create suggestions that are very possible to do. Okay. Thank you. Um... Next question from, from the audience. You're welcome to, to unmute yourself and ask the, the presenter. Otherwise, I have mm -hmm. a, mm, let's, let's see. Okay, I guess I have uh, one question. Um, so you mentioned in the beginning uh, how you account for, the, for safety perception from image. And mm -hmm. I have noticed from traveling that safety perception can be different depending on um, and can be cultural in true. many ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I wonder uh, how do you how do you factor that in uh, in your models? The so I am thinking that maybe um, I am thinking that touristic areas in Athens, Greece, where I am from, um, mm -hmm. certain areas that they are more commonly visited by locals because maybe the, um, the environment is more rugged, but there isn't that much crime, but um, other, other people can associate the, the environment, the graffitis and whatnot uh, with crime and not visit. So do you, do you account for uh, this kind of biases in, in your models and in what way? Yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't show that, and that uh, project because uh, this is still a, a work in progress. So we are trying to do different analysis. But yeah, what you said is, is true. So basically, we we found that there is a, a, a cultural bias, right, uh, on that. So basically, the data that we are using in that case is, is uh, uh, there was a project in the MIT, uh, MIT that they did. Basically, they showed two photos of two different places to the people, and they say which place do you consider safer, and people can select, and they did that project. Uh, they opened that uh, platform for different cities around the world, okay? 
So, and that basically using that kind of data, we can assign a, a security perception score to different places in the city. But using that analysis, uh, reducing, right? Using the analysis, for example, for continents, they give difference. So we can find different, uh, different effect, different scores. So we can basically, uh, we were able to identify that bias. And also we were trying to, to make uh, some deeper analysis trying to say why people, for example, from US consider this place secure or safer, right? So, and, and we do the same kind of analysis with using people from South America, for example, in Brazil, because a place that for one person from Rio de Janeiro, a, a safe place can be, it's very different to a, to a person from the US, right? We are doing this kind of analysis. We, we know that there is, we confirm that there is, but we are trying to make a deeper analysis, trying to give a, a more explanation on that. And I really look, I really look forward to to this work yeah. uh, coming out. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see that we are right, right okay. on the mm -hmm. on the mark. Thank you again, Dr. Poco. Let's give a warm round of applause to our to our speaker. Um, we will meet uh, next week with the urban dashboard. Um, thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye.